Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, we're going to talk about positional and keyword arguments in Kotlin. Let's create a function somewhere in this file. Actually, I'll just put it down here. I'll just call the function something really simple, like info. Now, suppose the job of the info function is to display some information. We've got several different bits of information of different types that we want it to display. We can actually make info have or accept multiple arguments. So we can specify multiple parameters here that will accept multiple bits of data when we call the function. So let's have a name, which can be of type string. We'll have a age, which can be of type int. And we'll have a height. Let's make that also of type int. And I want to display all these bits of information somehow. Let's have a print line. And I'll have a string here and we can say dollar name, age, dollar age, and height, dollar height. So let's see how we would actually use this function. How would we actually call it? When we call this function now, we have to pass all three bits of data to it. They all become mandatory. The first thing that we have to pass is going to be a type string. So let's pass in, for example, Bob. And the second thing we have to pass is got to be of type int. That's what we've called age. Let's pass in 52. And then we've got a height that we have to pass in as well. Let's pass in 183. So now we've passed all three bits of information. And you can see the IDE here, IntelliJ IDEA, has actually put these gray names in to remind me what parameters, so these are called parameters, what parameters each bit of information, each bit of data actually matches up to in this list. But they are matched up by position. Let's just run this and have a look at what it does. So you can see it says Bob, age 52, height 183. And of course, we could do what we want with these bits of data. We don't have to print them out. We could do all kinds of things with them. But the main point here is that these arguments, these bits of data that we're passing to the info function are matched to these parameters via the position. So we can call them positional arguments. Right here, we're actually creating a string object. And when we pass it like this to the info function, we're then making this name variable, this parameter called name, refer to this string object in technical terms. And we're going to go into objects and classes more later on. But you can think of a sort of entity here, which is a bit of data containing the text Bob. And we've ended up making this parameter called name be a way to refer to that entity, which we call an object. So we can use it right here. Similarly, Age here will get matched up with this 52 by its position. And this will get matched up to height because it's the third parameter in this list of three parameters. Now, there is another way that we can supply arguments to a function. That's called keyword arguments. Let's take a look at an example of that. So I'm going to call info again. And this time I'm going to say name equals Let's say Sue, comma, age equals whatever, 37, except that is an int, so I don't want quotes around that. And height equals 170. Let's save that. So here I've explicitly said in each case which parameter each of these arguments corresponds to by actually naming them. So these names correspond to the names down here. And if I run this, it works just as well. There we go. So in Java, for example, we can't do this. We can only do this. But this is actually pretty handy, especially since the order doesn't now matter. So I could have put age first if I wanted. Let's put age equals 37, comma, name equals Sue, comma, height equals 170. They're now in a different order to these. But because I've named them, we can still correctly pass each argument to its correct parameter. And finally, I want to show you that we can actually mix these two styles 
of passing arguments to functions. So I can say info. And now if I want some of the arguments to be matched by position and others to be matched via their name, the arguments that are matched by position have to come first. So for example, I can make the first one here name. Let's say this is Pete or something. So I'm not saying name equals Pete. I'm just saying Pete. That text right there has just come from the IDE. I haven't typed it and it's not actually part of my program. It's just a hint. And then we can specify the other parameters via keyword if we want. So let's say height equals 175 and age equals 25, for example. So this is a mix of one positional parameter that's matched up via its position. It's the first one in the list. And I've got two keyword parameters. So you can mix and match positional versus keyword parameters. Now, as always, if any of this seems complicated, the thing is just to practice it. Define your own function with multiple parameters. Try calling it just using positional arguments. Just supply the right number and type of arguments. That's important. And then you can try this keyword stuff as well. And I think you'll see how it works pretty quickly. Until next time, happy coding.